The Croatian War of Independence was fought from 1991 to 1995 between Croat forces loyal to the government of Croatia, which had declared independence from the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and the Serb-controlled Yugoslav People's Army and local Serb forces, with the JNA ending its combat operations in Croatia by 1992. In Croatia, the war is primarily referred to as the Homeland War and also as the Greater Serbian Aggression. In Serbian sources, war in Croatia is the most commonly used public term. A majority of Croats wanted Croatia to leave Yugoslavia and become a sovereign country, while many ethnic Serbs living in Croatia, supported by Serbia, opposed the secession and wanted Croatia to remain a part of Yugoslavia. Most Serbs effectively sought a new Serb state within a Yugoslav federation, including areas of Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina with ethnic Serb majorities or significant minorities, and attempted to conquer as much of Croatia as possible. In 2007, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia returned a guilty verdict against Milan Martic one of the Serb leaders in Croatia, for having colluded with Slobodan Milosevic and others to create a unified Serbian state. Between 2008 and 2012, the ICTY had prosecuted Croatian generals Anti Gotovina, Miladin Markak and Ivan Sermak for alleged involvement in the crimes related to Operation Storm. Sermak was acquitted outright, and the convictions of Gotovina and Markak were later overturned by an ICTY appeals panel. The International Court of Justice dismissed Croatia and Serbia genocide claims in 2015, while it reaffirmed that serious crimes against civilians were committed by both sides and that these acts constitute some basic elements of genocide. It ruled that the genocidal intent was not present. The JNA tried to keep Croatia within Yugoslavia by occupying all of Croatia. After they failed to do this, Serbian forces established the self-proclaimed Republic of Serbian Krajina within Croatia. After the ceasefire of January 1992 and international recognition of the Republic of Croatia as a sovereign state, the front lines were entrenched. The United Nations Protection Force was deployed, and combat became largely intermittent in the following three years. During that time, the RSK encompassed 13,913 square kilometers, more than a quarter of Croatia. In 1995, Croatia launched two major offensives known as Operation Flash and Operation Storm, which would effectively end the war in its favor. The remaining United Nations Transitional Authority for Eastern Slavonia, Baranja and Western Sirmium Zone was peacefully reintegrated into Croatia by 1998. The war ended with Croatian victory, as it achieved the goals it had declared at the beginning of the war, independence and preservation of its borders. 21 to 25 percent of Croatia's economy was ruined, with an estimated 37 billion dollars in damaged infrastructure, lost output, and refugee-related costs. A total of 20,000 people were killed in the war, and refugees were displaced on both sides. The Serb and Croatian governments began to progressively cooperate with each other, but tension remains in part due to verdicts by the ICTY and lawsuits filed by each country against the other. Background Political changes in Yugoslavia The war in Croatia resulted from the rise of nationalism in the 1980s which slowly led to the dissolution of Yugoslavia. A crisis emerged in Yugoslavia with the weakening of the communist states in Eastern Europe towards the end of the Cold War, as symbolized by the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. In Yugoslavia, the National Communist Party, officially called the League of Communists of Yugoslavia, had lost its ideological potency. Senior Slovenia and senior Croatia wanted to move towards decentralization. Senior Serbia, headed by Slobodan Milosevic, adhered to centralism and single-party rule, and in turn effectively ended the autonomy of the autonomous provinces of Kosovo and Vojvodina by March 1989. 
taking command of their votes in the Yugoslav federal presidency. The nationalist ideas started to grow within the ranks of the still-ruling League of Communists, while Milosevic's speeches, notably the 1989 Geza Mestan speech in which he talked of battles of quarrels, favoured continuation of a unified Yugoslav state, one in which all power would continue to be centralised in Belgrade. In the fall of 1989, the Serbian government pressured the Croatian government to allow a series of Serb nationalist rallies in the country, and the Serbian media and various Serbian intellectuals had already begun to refer to the Croatian leadership as Ustes, and began to make reference to crimes committed by the Ustes between 1941-45. to 45. Having completed the anti-bureaucratic revolution in Vojvodina, Kosovo, and Montenegro, Serbia secured four out of eight federal presidency votes in 1991, which rendered the governing body ineffective as other republics objected and called for reform of the federation. In 1989, political parties were allowed and a number of them had been founded, including the Croatian Democratic Union, led by Franjo Tudman who later became the first president of Croatia. In January 1990, the League of Communists broke up on ethnic lines, with the Croatian and Slovene factions demanding a looser federation at the 14th Extraordinary Congress. At the Congress, Serbian delegates accused the Croatian and Slovene delegates of supporting separatism, terrorism and genocide in Kosovo. The Croatian and Slovene delegations, including most of their ethnic Serb members, eventually left in protest, after Serbian delegates rejected every proposed amendment. In February 1990, Jorvan Raskovic founded the Serb Democratic Party in Nin, whose program aimed to change the regional division of Croatia to be aligned with ethnic Serb interests. Echoing Milosevic's position that internal Yugoslav borders should be redrawn to permit all Serbs to live in a single country, prominent members of the SDS including Milan Babic and Milan Martic, later testified that Belgrade directed a propaganda campaign that portrayed the Serbs in Croatia as being threatened with genocide by the Croat majority. On 4 March 1990, 50,000 Serbs rallied at Petrova Gora and shouted negative remarks aimed at Tudman, chanted, This is Serbia, and expressed support for Milosevic. The first free elections in Croatia and Slovenia were scheduled for a few months later. The first round of elections in Croatia were held on the 22nd of April and the second round on the 6th of May. The HDZ based its campaign on greater sovereignty for Croatia, fueling a sentiment among Croats that only the HDZ could protect Croatia from the aspirations of Milosevic towards a greater Serbia. It topped the poll in the elections and was set to form a new Croatian government. A tense atmosphere prevailed in 1990. On 13 May 1990, a football game was held in Zagreb between Zagreb's Dynamo team and Belgrade's Red Star. The game erupted into violence between fans and police. On 30 May 1990, the new Croatian parliament held its first session. President Tudman announced his manifesto for a new constitution and a multitude of political, economic, and social changes, notably to what extent minority rights would be guaranteed. Local Serb politicians opposed the new constitution. In 1991, Croats represented 78.1% and Serbs 12.2% of the total population of Croatia, but the latter held a disproportionate number of official posts. 17.7% of appointed officials in Croatia, including police, were Serbs. An even greater proportion of those posts had been held by Serbs in Croatia earlier, which created a perception that the Serbs were guardians of the communist regime. This caused discontent among the Croats despite the fact it never actually undermined their own dominance in senior Croatia. After the HDZ came to power, many Serbs employed in the public sector, especially the police, were fired and replaced by Croats. 
This, combined with Tudman's remarks, i.e., they declare that my wife is Jewish or Serbian. Luckily for me, she never was either, were distorted by Milosevic's media to spark fear that any form of an independent Croatia would be a new, Ustashi state. In one instance, TV Belgrade showed Tudman shaking hands with German Chancellor Helmut Kohl accusing the two of plotting a Fourth Reich. Civil unrest and demands for autonomy immediately after the Slovenian parliamentary election, 1990 and the Croatian parliamentary election, 1990 in April and May 1990, the JNA announced that the Josip Broz Tito era doctrine of general people's defense in which each republic maintained a territorial defense force would henceforth be replaced by a centrally directed system of defense. The republics would lose their role in defense matters and their TOs would be disarmed and subordinated to JNA headquarters in Belgrade. But the new Slovenian government acted quickly to retain control over the two. On 14 May 1990, the weapons of the two of Croatia, in regions with Croatian majorities, were taken away by the army, preventing the possibility of Croatia having its own weapons as was done in Slovenia. Borisav Jovic, Serbia's representative on the federal presidency and a close ally of Slobodan Milosevic, claimed that this action came at the behest of Serbia. According to Jovic, on 27 June 1990 he and Velko Kadijevic, the Yugoslav defense minister, met and agreed that they should, regarding Croatia and Slovenia, expel them forcibly from Yugoslavia, by simply drawing borders and declaring that they have brought this upon themselves through their decisions. According to Jovic, the next day he obtained the agreement of Milosevic. The Serbs within Croatia did not initially seek independence before 1990. On 25 July 1990, a Serbian assembly was established in SRB, north of Nin, as the political representation of the Serbian people in Croatia. The Serbian assembly declared sovereignty and autonomy of the Serb people in Croatia. In August 1990, an unrecognized mono-ethnic referendum was held in regions with a substantial Serb population which would later become known as the RSK on the question of Serb sovereignty and autonomy in Croatia. This was an attempt to counter changes made to the constitution. The Croatian government sent police forces to police stations in Serb-populated areas to seize their weapons. Among other incidents, local Serbs from the southern hinterlands of Croatia, mostly around the city of Nin, blocked roads to tourist destinations in Dalmatia. This incident is known as the Log Revolution. Years later, during Martik's trial, Babic claimed he was tricked by Martik into agreeing to the Log Revolution, and that it and the entire war in Croatia was Martik's responsibility, and had been orchestrated by Belgrade. The statement was corroborated by Martik in an interview published in 1991. Babic confirmed that by July 1991 Milosevic had taken over control of the Yugoslav People's Army. The Croatian government responded to the blockade of roads by sending special police teams in helicopters to the scene, but were intercepted by SFR Yugoslav Air Force fighter jets and forced to turn back to Zagreb. The Serbs felled pine trees or used bulldozers to block roads to seal off towns like Nin and Benkovac near the Adriatic coast. On 18 August 1990, the Serbian newspaper Vecenj Novosti claimed almost 2 million Serbs were ready to go to Croatia to fight. On 21 December 1990, the Sao Krajina was proclaimed by the municipalities of the regions of northern Dalmatia and Lika in southwestern Croatia. Article 1 of the Statute of the Sao Krajina defined the Sao Krajina as a form of territorial autonomy within the Republic of Croatia in which the Constitution of the Republic of Croatia, state laws, and the Statute of the Sao Krajina were applied. 
On the 22nd of December 1990, the Parliament of Croatia ratified the new constitution, which was seen by Serbs as taking away rights that had been granted by the socialist constitution. The constitution did define Croatia as the national state of the Croatian nation and a state of members of other nations and minorities who are its citizens, Serbs who are guaranteed equality with citizens of Croatian nationality. Following Tudman's election and the perceived threat from the new constitution, Serb nationalists in the Ninska Krajina region began taking armed action against Croatian government officials, many of whom were forcibly expelled or excluded from the Sao Krajina. Croatian government property throughout the region was increasingly controlled by local Serb municipalities or the newly established Serbian National Council. This would later become the government of the breakaway Republic of Serbian Krajina. After it was discovered that Martin Spegelj had pursued a campaign to acquire arms through the black market in January 1991 an ultimatum was issued, requesting disarming and disbanding of Croatian military forces considered illegal by the Yugoslav authorities. Croatian authorities refused to comply, and the Yugoslav army withdrew the ultimatum six days after it was issued. Military forces Serbian forces The JNA was initially formed during World War II to carry out guerrilla warfare against occupying Axis forces. The success of the partisan movement led to the JNA basing much of its operational strategy on guerrilla warfare, as its plans normally entailed defending against NATO or Warsaw Pact attacks, where other types of warfare would put the JNA in a comparatively poor position. That approach led to maintenance of a territorial defense system. On paper, the JNA seemed a powerful force, with 2,000 tanks and 300 jet aircraft. However, by 1991, the majority of this equipment was 30 years old, as the force consisted primarily of T-54 55th's tanks and MiG-21 aircraft. Still, the JNA operated around 300 M84 tanks and a sizable fleet of ground attack aircraft, such as the Soko G4 Supergalib and the Soko J22 Areo, whose armament included AGM-65 Maverick guided missiles. By contrast, more modern cheap anti-tank missiles and anti-aircraft missiles were abundant and were designed to destroy much more advanced weaponry. Before the war the JNA had 169,000 regular troops, including 70,000 professional officers. The fighting in Slovenia brought about a great number of desertions, and the army responded by mobilizing Serbian reserve troops. Approximately 100,000 evaded the draft and the new conscripts proved an ineffective fighting force. The JNA resorted to reliance on irregular militias. Paramilitary units like the White Eagles, Serbian Guard, Dusan Silni, and Serb Volunteer Guard, which committed a number of massacres against Croat and other non-Serb civilians, were increasingly used by the Yugoslav and Serb forces. There were also foreign fighters supporting the RSK, mostly from Russia. With the retreat of the JNA forces in 1992, JNA units were reorganized as the Army of Serb Krajina, which was a direct heir to the JNA organization, with little improvement. By 1991, the JNA officer corps was dominated by Serbs and Montenegrins. They were overrepresented in Yugoslav federal institutions especially the army. 57.1% of JNA officers were Serbs, while Serbs formed 36.3% of the population of Yugoslavia. A similar structure was observed as early as 1981, even though the two people combined comprised 38.8% of the population of Yugoslavia. 70% of all JNA officers and non-commissioned officers were either Serbs or Montenegrins. In 1991, the JNA was instructed to completely eliminate Croats and Slovenes from the army. Croatian forces The Croatian military was in a much worse state than that of the Serbs. 
In the early stages of the war, lack of military units meant that the Croatian police force would take the brunt of the fighting. The Croatian National Guard, the new Croatian military, was formed on the 11th of April 1991, and gradually developed into the Croatian Army by 1993. Weaponry was in short supply, and many units were either unarmed or were equipped with obsolete World War II-era rifles. The Croatian army had only a handful of tanks, including World War II surplus vehicles such as the T-34, and its air force was in an even worse state, consisting of only a few Antonov and two biplane crop dusters that had been converted to drop makeshift bombs. In August 1991, the Croatian army had fewer than 20 brigades. After general mobilization was instituted in October, the size of the army grew to 60 brigades and 37 independent battalions by the end of the year. In 1991 and 1992, Croatia was also supported by 456 foreign fighters, including British, French and German. The seizure of the JNA's barracks between September and December helped to alleviate the Croatians' equipment shortage. By 1995, the balance of power had shifted significantly. Serb forces in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina were capable of fielding an estimated 130,000 troops. The Croatian Army Croatian Defense Council and the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina could field a combined force of 250,000 soldiers and 570 tanks.